Hello, everyone, and welcome to State of the Game for October 6th. 6th, yes. 2016. We uh, have to start off. Yeah. We had uh, the first one of the day, Terra Zona. Congratulations. First, first person to say, people still play this game? For Lol. being that Lol. guy. Thank you very much. Good, good job. Thank you for your support. Good job. Appreciate you did it. it. No, but thank you everyone for coming by today. We are, again, are right in the midst of this whole PTS process, which is great for us, one, because we get to uh, talk about a lot of stuff. Yes. That's why we have someone who knows what they're talking about here. <laughs> so thank you, Nikki, for joining us. Nikki, for the people at home, who are you? Uh, I'm Nick, yeah. or Nikki. Most people call me Nick. All right. Um, for some reason, most people in Sweden, Sweden don't. All right. <laughs> but okay. you can call me Nick, Nikki, whatever. I'm part of the economy and progression team. Right. So we work with uh, XP, rewards, crafting, and personally I've been mostly working on uh, loot and vendors. Nice. All right. Well, there's been a lot of adjustments to those over the yeah. whole PTS yes. process, so that's Definitely. why it's uh, super good to have you here. We have um, week two has just finished. Yes. All right. So week three will be going live today, correct? Mm -hmm. I We're think uh, officially entering week three now. Oh my god, Ooh. a lot of stuff. So, uh, like we've said before, and I think it's uh, important to reiterate this: the PTS, as much as it pains me to say it, isn't for your enjoyment. It's not. <laughs> it's uh, it's for us to test a lot of things, and uh, that's why it's been really, really good. So we're honing in yep. on that. Um, a lot of the systems that require a lot of tuning, yep. uh, balance, loot, and gear, and the whole in-game experience, especially in the context of world tiers, um, we're kind of honing in on that experience. And I know I saw people in chat before saying, um, the, we've seen the patch notes, and it's like, oh, they're listening, they're listening. Yeah, we, this whole process, yep. um, yes, we're listening, but also we're testing. So we, we get the chance to, to look at you know, what's actually happening through the data that we get, but also... Um, mix it with that whole community yeah. uh, conversation. So, yeah. good job. And there's been, there's been a lot of discussion, uh, especially uh, last week following some of the changes we did. So, uh, obviously, this is all discussions that we've been reading and we've been listening to, and we made some adjustments now. As you said, we are, we're getting closer and closer to the end result that we're looking for. So, now it's just really about small tweaks here and there and testing one thing, things one way or the other. But, uh, yeah, we're getting there. Exactly. Someone's saying it's me, 83. They don't listen exactly. Chat said nerf Yannick's beard. That's true. And somehow it gets better every week. So I don't know. It, uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's becoming a thing now. So we were talking earlier with Nikki about, uh, about the fact that he doesn't have a beard. No. No. He doesn't no. also I'd... have the biceps. No. But That's we're always great trying, for us. Every time we're bringing something on the state of the game, it has to be something special. No, um, shiny head guy. So we, we, brought <laughs> you, we brought you a shiny head. We did, yeah. the, we did the head makeup earlier, which is yeah. the first time we've done that on set of the game. So. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. I also saw, um, and this is, it was, we had Drew Cena, and uh, I can't remember what, what Frederick, well, Fr Frederick's Weapon, weapons guy. Weapons guy. But uh, yeah. apparently Nikki's the hitman. There you go. <laughs> hitman. <laughs> yeah. Hitman. Okay. Hitman yeah. hit, hit hit Nick. <laughs> All right. That'll, hitman that'll work. Yeah. No, I don't do magic either. Oh, man. No. Unfortunately. No. no. There's only uh, one guy We're solely lacking in magic. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, for the people who didn't read the patch notes, Yannick's pretty good at reading. So. <laughs> <laughs> is he? Is he? No, you we know that there are some people that complain about my accent in State of the Game and they don't understand me. So. All right. If you say anything that's unclear, I'll try and clear it up. Although I'll I have won't to say, like. I won't say deck. All right. Fine. Boom. Uh, <laughs> okay. So. I got my patch notes. Uh, so we just published the patch notes on the forum for week three of the PTS. Uh, I don't know if the command in chat is up to date now. Or is no, it uh, Gabe just uh, updated it for us. So if you type exclamation patch notes in chat, you will get the latest uh, week three patch notes, which are the ones you have here. Yeah. So thank you, Gabe. Uh, Thanks, Gabe. The cringe. Yeah, the cringe. I know. That's, uh, that's my specialty, just ruining the mood. That's what I do. Yeah. Um, all right. So, let's go through it. Uh, I'm not going to read everything because, again, there's a bunch. Uh, but some of the interesting changes uh, and the first ones people should be ha happy about. So, there was, there was something uh, with uh, the time to kill and especially the time to be killed um, yes. that seemed kind of off with week two. It was already here in week one, but somehow it was not noticeable as much. Mm -hmm. But it became very noticeable with week two. So, <laughs> a lot of people are putting patch notes now. Yeah, um, <laughs> there you go. So basically what we did to address that is we decreased the damage of level 30, 31 to 33 NPCs by 15%. Yeah. 
Yeah, to get things back in line with the to get yeah, yeah to get baseline. things back in line with again the one to thirty experience and everything. So yep. what that means is that all the NPCs starting from world tier two mm -hmm. and above are going to deal fifteen percent less damage to you. So time to be cool. killed is gonna be uh, is gonna be much better and it's gonna feel better. So you're cool. not going to be as uh, yeah as fragile as you were before. So that should uh, that should help. Another nice. thing that we did with time to kill because there was still we were not completely happy. We're pretty happy with where we stand now with normal and veteran NPCs. Uh, it's pretty good, but with elites we felt like it was still a bit too much. It was still mm. a bit too long, especially when you have heavies, uh, because they're really. Uh, I mean, they're still uh, kind of bullet spongy. So what we did is we uh, decreased the armor of the elite NPCs by 17 percent. Mm -hmm. So they will have less armor. So all the uh, all the elites, not just the heavies, but all the elite uh, NPCs will have 17% less armor, which means your time to kill elite NPCs is going to be faster. Cool. Squishy, thank Works you. Squishy was the word I was looking for. Uh, so yeah, so that's going to be a bit better. That's also going to make it better for people who want to. Uh, I mean, when you're like going to challenge mode kind of difficulties and all that, and also if you want to if you want to solo this kind of difficulties because yeah. elites are still quite a challenge when you're when you're playing solo. So yes. yeah, that's two uh, two changes, but that should have a very significant uh, impact on your experience. So let us know how it feels uh, when yes. you play on week three or PTS three as we call it. Um, and then another change that we did regarding NPCs that is going to be noticeable is we basically change the threat mechanic. So yeah, we that's to try we out. tweaked or we we it's more than tweaked, but yeah, we we made a lot of changes to the threat mechanic. Um, I, sorry, I'm reading comments that are okay. No, I'm, I will not comment on that. <laughs> Guys, okay. keep it keep it clean, keep it clean. Yes, uh, please. <laughs> SB, stop it. Um, okay. A cringe again. That's what I do. I said. So yeah, the threat mechanic. So basically, what we what we did is we cannot change the threat mechanic. So you can have a better understanding how threat works and a better control yeah. over threats. So we changed the way NPCs react to threat generation, and we also changed the approach to threat with a lot of skills. Which means that now you will clearly have skills that generate threats, mm -hmm. skills that reduce threats. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the... the smart cover especially is one yeah, of the... Yeah, smart the cover, for example, uh, mobile cover also. Uh, Pulse is also going to have uh, one mod that actually reduces threat. Uh, so the yeah. idea is that we want you to have more control over it. So obviously, the guy who's standing there with a ballistic shield, shooting with his gun, should be generating much more threat yeah. than other guys. So especially you if you have your friends in smart yeah. cover, which is really cool. I'm looking forward to trying that out. So we have, we have a bunch of changes there regarding that. Uh, the end result should be that, yes, you should have much more control, better control over threat generation, which means that tanking should be, uh, uh, should be an aggro management, should be a proper mechanic uh, in a group. So that's going nice. to be interesting to see what you guys think about it. Uh, so test it and let us know. Uh, then, what do we have? Search and destroy and high value targets. So, we changed mm. uh, the search and destroy. There was something with search and destroy where a lot of the enemies were actually elites, which yes. is kind of wrong because search and destroy is not really meant to be something challenging. It's meant to be like an activity you can just farm, so you can farm your yeah. entails, and then the HVTs are meant to be a bit harder. Sure. And we had a lot of elites in the search and destroy, so what we did is we basically uh, yeah, removed them. Or most of them. So now it's going to be mostly just normal and veteran NPCs when you're doing search and destroy. Nice. Uh, so search and destroyers are going to be much easier and therefore much faster to farm as yeah. well. Keep in mind that when you also hand in the search and destroy thing back at the board, you get a reward. I uh, yesterday I was playing on the PTS and I got a 229 weapon, a 229 ACR yeah. just from handing in my search yeah. and destroy. So. Total uh, viable open yeah. world farming option now, which yeah. is really cool. And also in terms of uh, intel, by the way, that's not a week three change. I think it was a week two change. You guys changed the amount of intel you get from search and destroy, right? Yeah, yeah, we definitely changed it. I'm not sure if it was PTS two or or this week, but it's definitely changed from five to ten. So okay. that would lessen the, the grind a, a bit more, so you can mm -hmm. get to the actual contracts a bit more quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and the contracts get a lot of rewards now. It's super cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. also, yeah. And also one good thing with uh, actually search and destroy and high value targets is that we've heard, we made a change last week with in the end was not a very good idea. We wanted to make weekly high value targets contract uh, group content 
a lot of people have been commenting on that, so we've reverted that. So that means that high value targets and high risk targets will scale to group size again, which means you can solo them, the weekly ones. Uh, because uh, we made a change, so only daily could be uh, played with smaller groups, or they, only dailies would scale to group size, and weeklies would always be scaled for groups of four. Cool. You guys didn't like it, we understood, we understand, we agree, so we reverted it, so forget about it. No, nice. high value and high risk, uh, they scale to group size, so you can play them solo. So easier, um, easier search and destroy missions, more rewards or more intel from search and destroy missions, and therefore also high value targets, contracts uh, that will scale to group size. Nice. So, People yeah. are very, very happy about that one. That's, uh, that's really cool. I actually did a, a, the first weekly yesterday. I don't know if that was scaled to me or to, um, to the group size, but I, with my crappy build, mm -hmm. I ran out of time to, to oh. kill all the enemies. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. But then I went back with another build and I managed to do it, but it was, it was difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, um, I think this change is really, really cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, okay, next one, and uh, yeah, we know we know this one has been discussed already. Banshee. So we mm -hmm. said last week the four-piece Banshee, uh, the non-rogue bonus, yeah. uh, which was the speed bonus. We did tell you we had to remove it. Uh, we know that some people don't really understand why, or have been questioning why we have to uh, remove the uh, the speed uh, the speed buff. Basically, again, what's happening is there is a whole technical limitation to how fast you can move. Um, yeah. And basically, if we, keep, if we keep this speed bonus, on some machines it's going to work fine because your computer mm -hmm. or your machine is going to be able to uh, buffer out the game at the, at the speed you're moving. Mm -hmm. and on other machines it's going to be complicated yeah. and it might lead to situations where the game is not going to buffer fast enough, mm -hmm. which means we're going to have to force you into a slower speed or actually to make your character walk so the game can catch up. Uh, so it's not going to be a good experience. We know that some of you tried it and didn't have this issue, but that doesn't mean it's going to be the case for everyone. Yes. Um, it's yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but something we wanted to try, but that's not something that works uh, mm -hmm. good enough for us to uh, to release it. So we removed it. We did say we were going to remove it. We removed it. So now it's been replaced with why not rogue? Damage to rogue players is increased by 10%. That didn't change. Yes. And then no dark zone XP or currency is lost on death. So what that nice. means is that when you're wearing this gear set, if you're in a dark zone, you're not rogue. If you die, you're not going to lose any currency or any dark zone XP. Nice. I mean, uh, I know I've already seen a lot of the conversations around this online. People seem a bit split. Some people love it, yeah. some people don't like it. I mean, that's kind of also the same with a lot of sets we have because yeah. the game is about choice. Um, but again, we'll, we'll keep a close eye on how all these things pan out. But um, it'll be very interesting to see uh, that testing, especially yeah. in the context of the live game, because mm -hmm. right now one of the things you don't have with a set like uh, Banshee, which provides um, a lot of farming opportunities in the Dark Zone, yeah. that investment on your character doesn't really exist on the yeah. PTS because yeah. you're going to get deleted anyway. Yeah. But in the live game, when you know, you're really trying to gear up your character, um, you have a lot of the credits, which you can now spend on sealed caches, and we'll talk about that in a second, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, and you won't lose anything. So yeah. Yeah. there's uh, there's some cool yeah. things happening there. So we know, and I can see in chat already right now, that opinions are very split on mm -hmm. that one, uh, which is very interesting. Guys, keep discussing and let us know. Uh, try it on week three, try, try it on a PTS, let us know what you think. Yeah. Uh, we think it can be interesting because uh, Dark Zone is all about risk versus reward, and therefore now, if you're wearing this gear set, which of course is not mandatory for the Dark Zone, but if you're wearing it and you're not rogue, either that's going to help you farm, because if you die while farming, you're not going to have the, mm -hmm. uh, the consequences. Or also, if you want to do rogue hunting, it's going to be also less risk for you, because you're not losing as much if you actually don't manage to kill the rogue. Yep. So that's something we're experiencing, or we're like, yeah, we're just experimenting with. Let us know. Mm -hmm. Uh, next one, and that's a good one, um, named weapons. So the named weapons are no longer locked to specific gear scores. Exactly. Yes. Nice. So, but we talked a little bit about this off the stream before. Yeah. Um, I, I think now is a good time since we're talking about it and we don't forget it later on. Um, there's some changes to where you can find specific yeah, so, weapons, right? So, of course, it's like all the weapons are available at all gear score levels. But okay. there are some limitations to that, depending on the source where you get them okay, from. Okay. Like, um, like vendors, we scale those with world tier. So mm -hmm. everything that was on vendors, you can get at every level, depending on what tier you are. Okay. Um, like um, stuff that drops in open world okay. will also just scale, but depending sure. on the tier that you are. So a 33 or a 229 yeah. Caduceus is a thing now. 
Yes. Uh, but so is like a 182 showstopper, for example. Uh, okay. So that used to be a 229 only. Yeah. Um, the thing is that the um, we tried to keep the sources intact when we introduced the the world tiers. Yeah. But uh, for example, challenge mode for main missions is locked to tier two, right? Sure. So that means you like the showstopper is still behind challenge mode. So that one won't be available in tier one, yeah. which is why you can't get it as a 163. Oh, but okay, okay. from then on, you can get it at every, any gear score. So, but the, yeah, this, the swapping around of the sources has to do with the blueprints, because okay. blueprints do not scale, right? Like any other blueprint in our game is like, this is the fixed gear score thing that you yeah. make. Yeah. So we, instead of like offering a lot of blueprints for those as well, we try to like just redistribute the weapons that that affected. Okay, because I think you talked about Tenebrae earlier, yes, right? Yes, it blueprint should be ones. Tenebrae, uh, Valkyria, and Liberator. Okay. And uh, so we didn't put in the patch notes what the new sources are yeah. for these uh, named weapons. Okay. Two of them are quite easy to find because right. they're on the Phoenix credit vendor. So okay. you will see that as okay. soon as you open his... So uh, the, the Tenebrae and... No, the Valkyria okay. and the Liberator. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. And uh, the Tenebrae is um, somewhere else. Somewhere else. Somewhere else. Oh. So uh, whoever finds it first, Gets let cookie. us know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Send us a screenshot or something. Tell okay. us where you got it. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how the, the named weapons are going to contribute to character building with 229 options. Well, yeah. And, uh, I mean, there's so a lot of things that can be added back into the meta as yeah. well, yeah. which mm -hmm. is uh, going to be very interesting. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. By the way, Confliction T, I noticed you. I saw pork toe as well. What's <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So that's good news. That's uh, that's actually that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, one more thing about that though oh. is like the the one remaining blueprint is the like the Damascus, which is mm -hmm. the blueprint that you get for the first time. Okay. That is still yet for like completing uh, general assembly. It's the only weapon that you can craft through that blueprint, and it's only available at that level. Oh, okay. Uh, so. Uh, right, so that won't, there won't be a yeah. 229 Damascus? Not yet, no. Right. Maybe no. we can look into that for, uh, okay. for the future. But yeah. it's, uh, so it's the yeah. only exception, it's the only yes. weapon that... Yeah. Uh, all right. So yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, so skills. So there was a lot of discussion also regarding skills um, about the, the approach with a diminishing return curve um, and mm. how intense the diminishing return was. So we made some tweaks to the curve now based on your feedback as well. Uh, and we basically changed it so that we still want skills to be useful, even if you don't really spec in electronics, and that has always been the case because you know uh, mm -hmm. we don't want you to completely disregard skills. But therefore, we want to reward players who invo in, uh, invest in electronics heavily. We want to reward them more. So we changed the, the diminishing return curve to uh, make it more interesting, basically, to invest in electronics, which okay. means you're going to be able to go even further with your, with your skills by uh, investing in electronics. What that means, though, is that we had to do some tweaks with some of the skills to make sure that they don't scale like incredibly and you don't okay. end up uh, with very OP skills. So there's a bunch of rebalancing we did on skills based on that. Uh, I will not go through that. I uh, invite you guys to have a look at the, the patch notes. It's a lot of small tweaks here and there. Uh, it's nothing drastic. But uh, yeah, just have a look there. But know that, yes, now you're going to be rewarded more by investing heavily in electronics, uh, which is going to be nice. We also looked at the skill haste issue. We know that there was a, there was a video by uh, Marco uh, about uh, issues with skill haste where you could have like a two-second yeah. cooldown on the first aid and these kind of things. Uh, we put some, uh, some safeguard there. Uh, unfortunately, that means we have to put some caps on uh, skill haste. Um, sure. But yeah, that's that's the only way to uh, to make sure that it doesn't get completely broken. Um, yes. So yeah, but a bunch of changes with that. So try it. Try to invest in electronics and tell us uh, how it feels. And then with skills, the other thing that's interesting. So we talked about it. It's all the threat generation. So now things like ballistic shield will generate more threat. Will or uh, will generate threat just by the fact that you're carrying your ballistic shield, but it's also going to generate threat by you shooting with your gun. Mm -hmm. So basically, we're adding a lot of uh, threat mechanics there. So if you're standing in front of the NPC with your ballistic shield and shooting with the gun, you should generate more aggro than the guy standing in the back uh, sniping the NPC. Nice. So that's going to be a, whole, a lot of playing with the aggro. Uh, smart cover, for example, the concealment mod reduces the threat. Uh, so you can hide behind a smart cover and deal a lot of damages, and if there is another guy that's generating more threat, he's going to get the aggro. Mm -hmm. Pulse Crumbler also reduces threat. Um, 
and uh, yeah, mobile cover extension generates threat, countermeasure reduces threat. So yeah, a bunch of uh, skills actually got these kind of things. Nice. So again, try it. Tell us how it uh, changes the group mechanics and if uh, the tanking actually uh, feels like a, a proper approach now. But that should uh, that should be good. Okay, when next is loot. So right. that's your, right. your, ti <laughs> your time to shine. Um, okay. The first one, and that's a big one because that's a big discussion we had. And uh, yeah, there are a few disclaimers there, but open world named NPCs, we changed the uh, respawn cooldown or the respawn timer. It was at 24 hours, and we know that a lot of uh, comments were made on that. We changed it to four hours. Nice. So that's much faster. Cool. Yeah. So, of course, like, the, yeah, it's much, much faster. So we, yeah. we tried to look at, like, how long does it even take to like clear out the mm -hmm. entire game world? Exactly. If you are hunting these guys. Yeah. And of course, we don't want you to like, you know, find one guy, kill him, go back to the other guy because he respawned, and then like, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. go yeah. back and yeah. forth yeah. between yeah. those two. Yeah. So it needed to be somewhere in the middle between that and the the situation where you just have nothing you run for out. a very yeah. long time. Yeah. So uh, this is. This is the, 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 yeah. the new value yeah. and nice. hopefully and that will work. Yeah, yeah. It, sh it should work in a way that you're going to, or you can farm the open world, uh, kill the named NPCs, then go do something else for a while and then come back to the open world and you can kill the named NPCs right. again. So four hours should be like when you're having long gameplay sessions, that means that you could do it more than once. Uh, which is which is what we want. Now, of course, we've seen all the discussions about PVE dark zones, about landmark in PVE, and all these kind of things. We know that this is not a direct answer to all the things that you guys want, but in terms of time frame available for 1.4, this is what we can do. We cannot we cannot do more. We cannot add landmarks. We cannot add. Uh, I know that a lot of people were asking for map indication to help you farm mm -hmm. the bosses in the in the open world these are all good ideas and it's all things that we yeah. are uh, we want to hear from you guys just keep in mind that uh, yeah it's uh, right now it would be too much work if we were to start working on that we would have to push 1.4 to uh, much later so eventually now we are at the point where we need to uh, make decisions on how much we can do for 1.4 so this is this is a uh, this is a nice thing to make it better. We know it does not answer all the requests, but it should be it should be much better. Nice. Um, People are happy about the four hours, definitely. Four hours is nice. Someone yes. said four hours. That's like exactly uh, six times faster or something. And I was like, yeah, that's good. math. Good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what they said. Math. Good job. Good. Uh, all right. Next one. And that one I think you can talk about. Mission bosses, underground bosses, and underground chest will now only have a chance to drop purple instead of iron and gear set at normal difficulty in tier one. Yes. Repeat that after me now. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we can take that step by step, I yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's part design, part bug that yeah. this happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the design part is that we wanted to put the, the crate at the end of underground on par with these bosses, mm -hmm. uh, quality-wise. And these bosses had uh, chances of purple uh, on normal, in mm -hmm. all tiers. On normal difficulty, yeah. Yeah, on normal difficulty, in, in all tiers, though. So uh, that's the design part, that we wanted to do that. The bug part is that it didn't uh, stick to just normal. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it happened on hard and, and challenge as well. So that's fixed as a bug. Um, the other design part is, like, why would we have uh, purples on every world tier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's because like when we did our first iteration uh, on like loot and rewards, um, the like other people were working very much still on like the gear rebalancing and the stats sure. and everything. So at that time we worked with the assumption that a um, higher level purple than a high end could actually be better. Mm -hmm. Which means that if you move from one world tier to the next one and you try and play normal, yeah, purples would be viable. Mm -hmm. That's not where we ended up with the, yeah. with the purples. Yeah. So, uh, and that's a valid point from everybody who, who brought this up. Yeah. And that's why we also removed it from all world tiers except the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is where you just walk into end game and uh, are not decked in, uh, in uh, level 30 purples. Okay. And uh, they are still that uh, viable. Yes. Yeah. This is why the PTS is so good because we get yeah. to like yeah. uh, make these changes. And I'm yeah, yeah I I'm glad that we got that feedback and now we can get it in and all of that. Anyway, 
Yeah. We have a lot to go through still. Uh, so. Just <laughs> quickly, guys, as for date, we are not going to give you a date yeah. in this state of the game. Just no so date. we're clear with that. We don't have a date because we want to give you the PTS week three and we want to get your feedback. We think we're getting close to what we want to have, but we want to make sure that you guys agree with us before yeah. we confirm a date. So yeah. you're not going to get a date today, so no need to spam the chat with that. Um, but yeah, so just to make it clear, underground chests, especially, and also underground bosses and mission bosses, but the, the biggest contention point was the underground chest, will only have a chance for purple in normal difficulty tier one. Yeah. Normal difficulty over tiers, it's going to be guaranteed high end or gear set. Yeah. And hard difficulty and challenging difficulty tier one, also guaranteed high end and gear set. Yeah. So we, we kind of went back to something closer to what it was in week one compared to week two. We've seen that this was, a, this was a big issue. And as you said, it was also part bug. Uh, we talked about, like we confirmed it quickly uh, when people were complaining about it, but there was an issue where the underground was always uh, considering you as normal difficulty, even if you were not. So the chest would give you mm -hmm. the reward of normal difficulty. It's not gonna be the case anymore. So underground, good jobs. And also mission bosses and underground bosses. Yes. Um, and I'm talking about bosses. So the mission and incursion, so what we call the mid bosses, which are the four horsemen, the, what's their name again? Raptor and Domino in general assembly. I don't yeah. know if there are others, but like the named bosses you get <coughs> during a mission or during an incursion, but are not the end boss of this mission. Mm -hmm. uh, we made a change last week uh, where they had the chance to drop purple. That didn't go very well, so <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about it. Nobody wants the purples, no. Yeah. Um, I think, like, we don't consider these these guys actual bosses, right? They're yeah. like, they're named guys, but they're not the end of mission yeah. bosses. So that's sure. why we give them different loot, because for the guaranteed um, stuff that you get from an activity, we only take into account the bosses and the rewards, and the rest is bonus. Yeah. So. Uh, that's why we didn't want to guarantee you high ends from these these guys. Mm -hmm. So they had a chance for purple and a chance for high end, but it was a guaranteed drop. Yeah, sure. Um, but that's changed now, where we changed the guaranteed drop to crafting materials. So it's cool. always something useful. Uh, and if you get the additional actual item drop, it will be a high end. Nice. So, yeah. Okay, that's cool. I like that. So you, you won't see, basically you won't see purple from them, then you will always get your crafting material, and then if you get an item, it's going to yeah, be... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that's, and yeah, that should be good, because it's, it's always useful getting the crafting materials. That's something we discussed a lot with, uh, with some of you, uh, asking us to remove purples, and we said removing purples doesn't mean that we're going to give you high ends instead, but there are alternatives, like in this case, which is then giving you something more useful. Yeah. Uh, which actually leads me, I wanted to ask you about purples because that's, uh, that's a discussion we had a lot and with the changes we did in week two, a lot of people have been complaining. Why, why would you ever give us purples in world tier four when you know that this is useless to us mm -hmm. at all? And even though we're doing changes, you're still going to be, have chances to drop purples on like random en enemies, for example. Yeah. So can you talk a bit about why, from a game design point of view, we need to have this? Yeah, I, I think that's like how a, a loot game works, right? It's like you have to have some not so good drops to appreciate the, the actual good, good drops. Yeah. And we have a system where we guarantee you the good drops from the bosses and the rewards. Yeah. But of course, your regular mobs out in the open world are just that, like cannon fodder, right? So they're not supposed to give you the best stuff all the time. They are there to have a chance for that. Uh, and if you don't get that, then you get something else, which we have like other systems uh, where these things can be used, right? Like you sell them and you buy something else, or you deconstruct them and you craft something else. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that's that's basically the point. We can't only hand you out the good stuff all the time, basically. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. And a lot of people uh, seem to get that in chat, yeah. you know, saying like, yeah. you, if you need credits, they're a good thing to sell. If you right. need mm. crafting materials, yeah. you can make that decision. Um, people saying. <laughs> Uh, high end can be crap as well. That's that's true that is, sometimes. That is, that is also true. true. That is also <laughs> sometimes, true. Uh, and then again, you have that that same decision. You yeah. know, yeah. do I want credits? I'll sell it. Yeah. Do I want crafting materials? I'll do that. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, but we get it. Um, but so yeah, I think I think one of the interesting changes that you made now is that, and that's what you pointed out. It's that like we want to make sure that when you get guaranteed items, like on bosses and everything, yeah. it's gonna be then it's all it's not gonna be a purple anymore. And that was maybe the mistake we did in uh, week two or the issue we had with week two, which was sometimes it would be very frustrating to open this chest and get mm. a purple item when you uh, expect yeah. to get uh, something else. But so. that, that's basically how we do our our balancing when we come up with the like the appropriate rewards for for playing a mission both from the reward and from the boss drop uh, and then everything you get on top of that because you just shoot a bunch of NPCs then that's a bonus yeah, yeah. sure um, so just to continue the derailing a little bit just before we move on <laughs> yeah. um, someone brought it up just a second ago and now I've forgotten what I was talking about but um, it was to do with uh, the the loop being part of the uh, that system the whole the whole uh, economy Right. right. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is yeah. what I was going to say. Yes, I remembered. So I don't look like as much of an idiot as I was going to. Crafting. Uh, someone was said crafting is not uh, great right now, um, and we mm. know this. Like, there's crafting is something that we want to work on in the future. One point four doesn't address crafting in the way that we want it to. Mm. Um, but in the future, we will take another pass at crafting. Um, there, there's plans for crafting coming. Yes. But not in one point four. Yeah. So stick around. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's some, definitely something we look at. Uh, okay, moving on, and I've seen uh, some people have been commenting on that. Uh, Division tech has been removed as a requirement from high-end and gear set blueprints. Yeah, so... Why? Why did you do that, Nikki? Uh, well, we, because we moved all the, these type of blueprint from Dark Zone to the, the blueprint vendor in the terminal. Mm -hmm. And we always had the rule that if you buy a Dark Zone blueprint, then Division tech is required to mm -hmm. make that thing. Now that is not actually a Dark Zone blueprint anymore because you can buy it in the terminal. Okay. So that's why we removed all the Division Tech requirements from those blueprints. Okay. Are there any Dark Zone specific yeah. blueprints now? or are they? Uh, throughout the leveling game there are still uh, blueprints okay. that you can purchase there that have uh, uh, Division Tech requirements. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But, but in the end yeah. game you don't... No, they're okay. all moved to the, to the blueprint vendor in the terminal. Yeah. yeah. And so that means that... Good year. Division Tech is kind of... Like, what's the use for Division Tech now? Um, so you can of course still use it as a as a um, conversion. Yeah. Uh, I like that. So you can turn it into whatever. So that's the main purpose right now. Yeah. And for the future, we're looking into how we can uh, find other functionalities mm. for it. Mm. Yeah. So basically, we know it's going to use less now. But well, I don't think it's useless. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But like like right now, I have a bunch of division tech. Right. Um, and I need more electronics. Like yeah, I, I, exactly. I just, no, I just I mean, need it, right? It's like, a, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's definitely good for conversion because it's also better to convert a division tech than converting lower crafting material to higher crafting material because the, the conversion mm -hmm. rate is better. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's definitely uh, something that we will need to look at again and address yeah. and make yeah. more useful uh, mm -hmm. in the future. That's not useless. Sorry, chat. Sorry, chat. <laughs> I, I, I meant it as a joke, okay? Yeah. That's, All right. That's fine. Sorry. Didn't mean to offend anyone. Division tech lovers. Uh, <laughs> bug fixing. Okay, I'm at the bug fixing. We're almost there, guys. Um, da -da -da. What is this one? Ah, fixed a bug where a whip weapon could be crafted MG5. Yes, rip MG5. MG5, you, you didn't see anything. Like, there was n never an MG5. It didn't exist. For all intents and purposes. <laughs> it won't this, exist this in week... This is not the MG5 you're looking Exactly. At. It won't... Uh, it's not in week three of the PTS. Correct? It shouldn't be, no. no it shouldn't it's be, right? Yeah, it's in the no, batch notes, been, so it should be removed. All right. Um, yeah. But people... Uh, I saw a lot of conversations like, oh, it's, it's so OP, why don't these guys uh, balance the MG5? Mm. It, the values on it were completely arbitrary based on stuff that happened a long time ago. The MG5 was never, ever intended to fit in the current context of the yeah. game. Don't freak out. MG5, not a thing. All it's right. not a thing. It, it will be a thing eventually. It will be, and it will fit with... Not 1.4. It'll fit with the weapon balancing of that time, but for now. It shouldn't be confirmed, not removed. Well, we never know with PTS. It shouldn't have been in the PTS at all, you know? So no. we never know. But uh, no, it's not, it's not meant to be in 1.4. It's not balanced for 1.4. So yes, it was completely OP. We know that. Uh, it was never meant to be there yeah. uh, to begin with. Uh, okay, what else do I have? Uh, gear stats. Ah, yeah. So there was an issue with uh, recalibrating or recalibration, especially when converting mm -hmm. uh, gear from 1.3 to 1.4. Uh, your stats are supposed to scale with the new balancing of 1.4, but there was an issue if you had uh, 
gear that were actually uh, recalibrated in 1.3, the stats, the main stat, firearms, stamina, and uh, electronics, if they would have been recalib recalibrated in 1.3, when you move to 1.4, the recalibration result was not scaled properly. So basically, okay. you would end up with something that was a bad roll uh, because the scaling is different. Yep. Anyway, long story short, we fixed that. So if you recalibrated firearms, stamina, or electronics on your 1.3 characters, it's not going to be scaled properly to 1.4. Uh, good bug fix there. And that's a good one. That's not a PTS thing, that's a lie. Uh, skills, I think actually we fixed the bug uh, with the skills stuck on cooldown. Okay, on the live game? Yeah, or the one that is on the live game. It's fixed in PTS week 3. It was oh, okay. Alright. Uh, so, yeah. That's a good one also. So the issue where when you would be stacking uh, support stations and all these kind of things in Dragon's Nest and you ended up with your uh, skills being kind of broken, uh, this is fixed. Nice. And uh, and also, yeah, we fixed also another bug, a display bug. Uh, we talked about it last week already. There was a bug with the existing gear when it was uh, transferred from 1.3 to 1.4. The mod slots would be duplicated on the right of the gear icon for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. This has been fixed. It's not going to be an issue anymore, so it should be uh, much clearer. Cool. Uh, yeah, there's there's much more, but again, I'm not going to go through we'll it. Again, we'll be here all day, which we don't <laughs> mind, but you, you guys would probably be sick of us. Yeah. Um, all right. I uh, had some follow-up stuff. So uh, we have Nicky on today, and there's also going to be a dev blog coming out tonight. At, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, it should be coming out tonight. All right, probably tonight. Uh, but we have a lot of information in there about uh, specific gear and loot things. Um, but some of those things I wanted to talk about before we even get to that. But uh, so um, there's a little bit of confusion around sealed caches, right? You can now purchase them. Yeah. Um, you have ones that you can buy at the... DZ checkpoints? There should be sealed caches in all currencies. Okay. So on, on the weapon and, ven uh, weapon and gear vendors uh, for E-Credit, the Dark Zone guys, and Phoenix Credit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've, I've seen the, the checkpoint ones. Mm -hmm. um, the Phoenix Credit ones, is that from in the base of operations? Or? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, right. yeah, in the terminal. All right, okay. Yeah. Right. But uh, so we, there's now a lot of uh, things happening there. There's a little bit of a difference between the Dark Zone ones and the, yeah, and the, the other ones? I think the, the E-Credit and the Dark Zone ones are quite similar content-wise. Mm -hmm. You just pay for them in a different currency. Okay. Um, uh, and the, the Phoenix Credit ones are more specific. Okay, in like, what way? As in, you can buy uh, one that actually says weapons. And, oh, okay. Uh, gear, so you can... Like it, it's less random, so you can ah. pick what uh, what pool to roll from, basically, if you uh, if you buy one of those. That's so, cool. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. So nice. it should have like weapons, gear, gear set, and cool. mods. Yeah. Nice. All right, that's cool. So like you can actually, if I'm you know being a little bit you know pedantic, but you could technically just gamble like for yeah mods. yeah. Okay. Well, I mean like the prices are much lower. Yeah. Than for a uh, for uh, for an item there, mm -hmm. so because it's still like a gamble of what you're gonna yeah. get, uh, and these caches scale with your gear score, so right. they will be available like at every world tier. Prices will mm -hmm. not go up because you get the same stuff always from it. Nice. Uh, so it's it's always there. It's cheaper, but you you never know what you're gonna get. Mm. So, so I, I see someone saying you know increase Phoenix credit limit from two thousand. Here's the thing: if your Phoenix credit cap now you can just you can blow through those Phoenix credits to you know. Yeah, you need. that's that's the thing, right? If you if get, get yeah. rid of them yeah. and yeah. get some stuff, <laughs> the, that's really cool. The, the vendors like got a big update, uh, yeah. like uh, as well in the in the previous week already, I think, mm -hmm. or from from like they had a big change in PTS two, but they also had an update in the first week, and uh, so hopefully there's something to buy from any of them. But mm -hmm. if there's not, then you can still spend a little bit of like less currency on one of these caches and still get something. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so, I mean, we actually talked about this a little bit earlier, you know, the changes from week one to week two, but for people who weren't here, um, when the PTS dropped in week one, they were like, yay, loot, it's everywhere. Mm. And then week two, there were some tweaks, but also some bugs that mm. affected that. Week yeah. three, would you say that we're going back at all? or like? Well, I think the main issue that kind of, like... Uh like created the perception of of all the nerves on on, yeah. on loot drop chances and stuff is the the thing with the underground box and the yeah. the, the, the mm -hmm. availability of purples and stuff like that, and uh, like the I think the the reaction was so vocal vocal that mm -hmm. we actually like 
went into detective mode and like like tried to figure out between all the builds yeah. like mm -hmm. where did our like actual like our own changes come in and where like what did end uh, what ended up on the PTS mm -hmm. and uh, so we did some like you know change list numbers on builds and stuff like that to figure out when when what went in when and we absolutely uh, did not change drop chances at all mm -hmm. on like mobs and and and, and look, those regular enemies right. in between PTS builds so nice yeah. all right so uh, week three should again and uh, we want your feedback on these things so mm. if you have a good loot experience in week three. Let us know, and if if you don't, yep. let us know. But we need to we need to see exactly what happens in week three. Um, we actually have an image uh, from from the <laughs> oh, from the dev yeah, blog yeah. that's coming out a little bit later, uh, just for clarity. And I know that when we talk about things, people often miss uh, exactly how those work. Kevin, can we just bring up the image uh, for uh, how waiting works in incursions now? Uh, because you can now get. I, any gear set from any incursion, correct? Yes. Yes. But you can also get any gear set from any random guy now. That's true. So, but, um, so I know people uh, in regards to this have said, you know, well, it it, it forces me. It's, it's going to have less chance for me to find what I'm looking for. The opposite's true, right? Like mathematically, yeah. you should be able to target the drops you want yeah. in a more efficient way. Yeah, and you right. should actually be able to target gear sets that were previously in underground DLC. Uh, okay, um, so if you don't own the underground DLC, you can now get that content. Yeah, okay. yeah exactly. It's like the the waiting before was like the the gear sets that released in one of our updates mm -hmm. were mostly available in the incursion that released in the same update. Okay, and of course with underground with that being paid for and Dragon's Nest being paid for mm -hmm. and underground the game mode being paid for, that means that those gear sets were there. So what we changed here in general is that. All gear sets are in like all those common drops from regular enemies, mm -hmm. but we still wanted to give you a way to target certain things. Um, so what we tried now is to actually like tie, like you can yeah see in this image like tie certain slots of gear set mm -hmm. to uh, a certain incursion. Just a, just a, sorry, a quick disclaimer. Yes, armor is actually a chest piece. I don't know why. Uh, uh, we yeah, put that should be a vest. Picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Chest armor. Yeah. Yeah. So of, of course, Dragon's Nest is still a paid for. Uh, incursion, mm -hmm. but you only need four out of six pieces to make a gear set work. Yeah. Um, so, like, even people that don't own Dragon's Nest can uh, farm for for these these sets. Yeah. And technically, like, they could find backpack and knee pads elsewhere in the world. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not locked to this. It's more like if you if you play this, then the, the rewards from uh, this incursion will tailor towards this. And you can actually preview this when you look at the rewards. Uh, in the inc uh, on the incursion icon in the world map. Oh, okay, so yeah. I'll tell you on the map. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right, uh, the other things I have written down are the level 33 mods. Right. Yes. So what's happening there? Because, I mean, that's for people who haven't been on the PTS, they don't mm. have access to those in the live game. No. Uh, what, what can you tell us about level 33 mods? That they're there now. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, no, the, the reason behind this is it kind of has to do with, uh, I think, what like Drew explained on this stream before, is that, like... At end game, like a lot of items that we have, like scale out of control, mm -hmm. and weapon mods were contributing a lot to like your overall yep. power increase if you were min maxing at end game. Um, so that's why we basically capped mods at level 32, mm -hmm. so that this wouldn't go like grow into an even bigger problem. Uh, but of course, with the whole new world tier system and the entire rebalance of how mods work in general, uh, we were like, if we have a world tier that allows you to play basically in a level 33 world, then you should be getting level 33 mods. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a priority for us to make sure that that happened. Uh, and um, in addition to that, there were also a couple mods that didn't come in certain qualities. Mm, or like the uh, laser pointer? Exactly, yeah, yeah. like mm -hmm. the small, like your pistol laser pointer and stuff like right. that. That's Literally also unplayable. That's also gone. So right. all mods, all qualities, all levels. Nice. All right. <laughs> People are like, where's Drew? Drew's in the gym. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes yeah. Drew is, is in yeah. the gym. We're going to wrap it up here in, in just a second uh, because, again, these state of the games have been running over time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're, yeah. But that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with it because uh, we get to talk for longer. We'll, uh, if we see any questions pop up in chat, yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do that. Uh, just 
Yeah, no, no, I was just going to say, uh, Will, you know, is, is there anything we missed for the, for the yes, people? Yes, PTS, actually. What's going to happen on the PTS? Because I've seen a lot of people asking, uh, does that mean what's going to happen to the MG5 I've crafted on the PTS or whatever? Uh, we are actually resetting the database on the PTS. Yes. So what that means is that we are re-importing the live game database today to the PTS. So yep. all the changes you made during week two, they're all gone. You're starting fresh. Uh, yeah. So that means that, yeah, all the items that you got during week two and all that, everything is gone. Um, the reason why we're doing that is, again, because we need to uh, make sure that we test the transfer from 1.3 to 1.4 with the new changes we did, especially with stuff like uh, we talked about recalibrated stats and all of that. So, yeah. There you go. Uh, uh, I think people uh, understand that. But I've seen a lot of questions about stash increase. That's not happening, uh, to be clear. Uh, we, yeah. we know you guys have talked about it a lot. Yeah. It's but not happening for 1.4. Uh, there was something else, another question that was for 1.4. Yeah, somebody was asking earlier, I've seen that, I wanted to answer that. The, uh, underground checkpoints, yeah. any progress for 1.4? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be for 1.4. It's also something we want to look at, but it's not going to be uh, 1.4. Uh, and the question about the free vendor, so we talked yeah. about uh, how we wanted to add a vendor that would allow you to generate items and uh, min-max. It's unfortunately not something we managed to put in the build, uh, so yeah. we won't have a free vendor. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah uh, we couldn't get that in. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's one it's, of those things that would have been really nice, yeah. uh, but we had to focus on actually all the other things that needed fixing. Yeah, yeah. We, we just couldn't, we, we wanted to make it, we couldn't make it, so sorry about that, um, yeah. but yeah. How do the weapon skins work now? Well, if you missed that news, they now you only need one of them, and you can apply them to all weapons, and also they don't take up any inventory space. Uh, that's one of the things. Anyway, uh, I also want to remind you, if you're just tuning in on Twitch, you can listen to this, or you can watch it on the past broadcasts, if that's your thing, if you wanted to go back and watch the start of it. Um, we now have this available in podcast format uh, from last week. We had that one up. Um, and also, if you're listening to the podcast now and not watching, then good job. You listened to a podcast. But, um, yes, yeah, so you can go back and listen to all the things that we've talked about. And there are, there are certain people online who do recaps of these things as well, yeah. which we really appreciate. Uh, uh, one small thing. I see people commenting about that, and it's very important. Uh, stuttering on consoles. Uh, people are saying we're focusing on PC. We're not fixing. We have a fix for stuttering on consoles. So yes. That should, be, that should be much better in 1.4. Again, stuttering can be uh, caused by many things, so mm. we don't know yet if we caught all the reasons for it, but a, like, yeah, a big bunch of it, most of it should actually be fixed with 1.4 because we, we found the reason for, uh, the main reason for stuttering. So don't worry, console guys, we are not forgetting about you. We are not just focusing only on the PC. We are also, in the same time, adding uh, fixes for console issues. Uh, same with disconnect yes. on PS4 during uh, incursions and these kind of things. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. We, um, have a, we have a bunch of fixes for you guys. Exactly. Th those stutter fixes and, and, and stuff for, for console, I know people, and I, I totally understand it. It's frustrating right now to have to wait till 1.4, but those things have to be um, a lot of, of client fixes, not just server side things, which we, you know, if they were, that'd be great, but we could, yeah. unfortunately don't live in that world right now. Anyway, we got to hit off. Uh, we'll be back again. Uh, I'll probably be streaming in the morning for the week three of the PTS. Maybe I can even jump on this afternoon. I don't know. Depends if we, if we have some time. Um, but yes, thank you very much for hanging out today. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll be getting closer to 1.4. Hopefully we have a release yes. date for you soon. But yeah. uh, we, ha we have to first have to see what happens in week three. So please uh, stay active on the forums or wherever you're having these conversations. It's really helpful to us. Uh, where else people, uh, you know, People are interacting with us, uh, obviously, in Twitch chat. Um, yeah. We appreciate all you guys. Uh, Twitter, Facebook as well. And yeah, yeah, Twitter, Facebook. The, 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 main, the main place for PTS discussion should be the forums. The PTS course, forums. Are, yeah. yeah, the PTS forums. But we are, of course, looking at uh, all the discussion platforms everywhere. So yes. just let us know. Thank you. Someone says, what does PTS mean? Public test server. That's a great yes. note to finish on. We'll see yeah. you again really, really soon. Thanks very much. See you guys. Bye.